and welcome everybody to another Haunts of Brisbane video. Now this one's going out as part of our November campaign. Um, for anyone who doesn't know the November campaign, um, by all means hit the subscribe button here on YouTube, but especially jump over and give us a like on Facebook. Um, because during the month of November we're saying no um, to unscrupulous paranormal groups uh, in the southeast Queensland region who are moonlighting as historians. Um, and ultimately um, diluting our, our uh, history, um, destroying a lot of the stories about Brisbane. Lots and lots of hearsay being put out there. Um, and by all means, uh, we've uncovered a ton of these stories this month already, and we're only about halfway through November. Um, now, as far as the video that you've just watched, a little snippet of the video, um, it came from a channel. Um, the link was um, in the video there. Um, but it has to do with a ghost tour that was being, or is still being run um, through Tawong Cemetery. Now when it comes to the main family, um, and God knows there's a bit of history there, um, if you know your Brisbane history or even a fraction of Brisbane history, but I wrote extensively um, about the main family um, who were for rightfully or wrongfully were embroiled in um, probably one of Brisbane's most grisly murders um, back in 1848. But rightfully or wrongfully, um, I wrote back in 2012, uh, January 2012, extensively on this and hoped that I had set the record straight, at least um, as best as possible, um, as far as a lot of the details about the murder of Robert Cox back in 1848, but especially a lot of the rumours that were being kicked around um, about the main family, and in particular, the main memorial that is built at Tuong Cemetery. Now, couple of bits and pieces to unpack as far as the video snippet um, at the start of this one is concerned. Um, so probably first and foremost before we get into the mains, let's have a little bit of a chat about exploding corpses. Yo, come on, five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> Whoa, bit of late explosion there for this house. He's smoking and smoldering down there. Now, exploding casket syndrome absolutely is a thing, um, and it's fairly well known within the funeral industry, but it's not really how it sounds. Now, exploding casket syndrome, um, especially in hermetically sealed caskets or, or caskets that are sealed much too well, um, a lot of funeral homes put what they term burp valves, um, as gross as that sounds, um, in coffins, um, has to do with sort of the gas buildup as part of um, that um, breakdown process of a body being in a coffin. Obviously, if the coffin's fairly airtight, it's going to burst open. Um, and especially if it's a burial above ground in something like a mausoleum, um, you're going to end up with a lot of fluids and, and grandma all over the inside of your mausoleum. Now, it has rarely, rarely ever um, occurred that a casket has exploded to the point where it's, it's collapsed. Um, a mausoleum or an above ground burial and I can absolutely assure you that University of Queensland properties and facilities aren't popping out to Tuong Cemetery every night between 9 and 11 p.m. apparently after the gates have been shut by security um, to double check the main monument um, to ensure that it hasn't collapsed because of an exploding coffin given that the very last burial that was um, put into that grave um, was all the way back in 1940, so over 80 years ago now. The biggest problem that we've got with the video um, is the continued reference to the main monument being called a crypt or a tomb or a mausoleum. Um, the internet is full of referrals to tombs, to crypts, um, and I know that it is absolutely not um, as it is described, um, especially by a lot of the paranormal groups um, who sneak their way into Tuong Cemetery after dark, um, and especially certain other ghost tours that are being run through Tuong Cemetery. Now, the biggest dead giveaway, um, and probably the, the best um, sort of um, explanation of, of what is actually built over those main graves, comes to us from a newspaper article from 1891. Now, according to the article, which was published in the Brisbane Courier on the 26th of February, 1891, um, the journalist actually goes into quite great depth explaining um, the ins and outs, the architectural features of the main monument. And the article goes, 
what is undoubtedly the finest marble monument in the colony has just been erected in the Tuong Cemetery over the family grave of late Mr. Patrick Main. The monument is a perpendicular Gothic order, note the word monument, and is 23 feet high and 11 feet by 9 feet at the base. It consists of a square panel die, the right and left sides being octagonal and surmounted by vases. The die is capped with carved oak, laurel and ivy sprays, and above is an enriched canopy supported on four three-quarter columns with carved caps. The canopy is surmounted by a finial and cross. Under the canopy stands a female figure representing La Paregia or Prayer, with arms crossed and bearing in one hand a floral wreath. The ground, which is 24 feet by 18 feet, that's the plots that are underneath it, is enclosed with a balustrading of flamboyant design, the pillars and the coping being of Helladon stone, while the capping and panels are of Mount Summer stone. It is situated in the Roman Catholic portion of the ground on the side of a hill facing one of the main drives. Now hill being an absolutely poignant term here. And consequently, it has been necessary to have high walls erected at the front and the sides. So keep that in mind, front and sides, high walls. The walls are constructed of breakfast creek stone. No inscription has yet been cut as it has been decided to leave this till Mr. Isaac Main returns from Europe. The whole monument, which has been erected by Messrs. John Petrie and Son, presents a very impressive appearance. The monument itself is the work of Professor Primo Fontana of Carrara, who is renowned in Italy as a monumental sculptor. The carving is exquisite, while the figure representing prayer is quite a work of art. The marble is remarkably pure for its quality, namely Canal Bianco, so called because the quarry from which it is obtained is situated on a mountain of that name. So, why is this a major problem for Patrick Main's crypt or tomb or whatever you want to call it? Well, it's a major problem considering that that newspaper article came from 1891, the same year that the monument, the, the big marble um, structure above the graves was built. And that is a major problem because what Patrick's wife passed away in 1889 and Patrick passed away in 1865. Now, when we know cemetery history in Brisbane, we know that Tuong Cemetery officially opened in 1875. So it opened 10 years after Patrick Main's death. Patrick Main was actually buried in Paddington Cemetery or the Northern Brisbane Burial Grounds, which now resides pretty much um, underneath where Suncorp Stadium now is, Ex Lang Park. Now, on his wife's passing um, in early September of 1889, um, within a couple of weeks, Patrick and his daughter Evelina, um, who um, passed away many, many years before Tuong was open, um, both of their remains were, um, were exhumed um, from the Paddington Cemetery grounds and were moved back over so that husband, wife and child um, could all be reunited um, at Tuong Cemetery. So all buried in early and late September of 1889. That big marble, beautiful marble monument wasn't built until two years later um, in 19, 1891. So we can't really have a crypt, can we? Um, they were all ground um, interments underneath there. Now, right the way up to Patrick's daughter, um, who finally passed away in 1940, um, supposedly the, the very last of that lineage, the, of the main line. Um, when she was buried, the newspaper articles of 1940 again mentioned that she was buried. Now, when we have a look at that architectural um, discussion that was in the newspaper in 1891, it states that um, the walls of that um, monument um, were high at the front and the side, only because the section alongside 12th Avenue um, or Elizabeth Dale Walk, as it is now known, um, slopes away quite steeply. So the very, very front is very, very high. If you want the very back 
of the monument to be pretty much at ground level, at, at road level. So any mention or, or any insinuation that it's a crypt, that Patrick Main is residing you know, above ground in a coffin, um, as, as are all of his um, lineage, um, is absolute fallacy. Now, what's more of a fallacy, again, something that I tried to dispel um, back in 2012, but it looks like um, even up until the last couple of years, according to the video that you watched, that, that video snippet right at the very, very beginning, um, there are still these absolutely bogus claims that there are there's blood or, or some kind of red liquid that runs out of the, the small air vents um, at the front of the main monument. Now, I have been running tours at Tuong Cemetery for a number of years now. I have been visiting Tuong Cemetery for many, many more, well and truly 20, 30 years plus, and not once have I seen any red liquid running out of the front of the main monument. Never have I seen any residue, um, you know, whether it be red or rusty um, or otherwise around those air vents. Um, definitely sort of where the monument is, um, probably you know, almost two metres from the gutter as it runs down 12th Avenue or Elizabeth Dale Walk. Um, if there was anything that was running out of that grave whatsoever, um, out of that monument, you would definitely see it. it would, there would be staining on the ground, there would be staining on the front. Um, the main monument is, is whitewashed, um, sort of on that sandstone um, or sort of porphyry frontage that's on it. There is no staining whatsoever. So again, absolutely bogus claim that there is nails and bolts that are rusting out, but we'd like to think that it's the blood running off the main you know, the main family's hands. Absolutely ridiculous, and it does nothing um, but tarnish um, the name of um, a family who passed Patrick Main, um, his children bequeathed um, countless millions of dollars, you know, probably hundreds of millions, if not more by today's standards, um, to medical schools in Brisbane, to the University of Queensland. So with that, I'll leave this video here. Um, again, if you haven't already, jump onto the Facebook page and um, subscribe here on YouTube, and we'll be bringing you more stories, um, debunking lots of crazy ghost stories and, and urban legends and myths throughout November. So stay tuned, and thanks again.